Did anyone ever tell you at any point in your career, just do what you love? I hate that advice. When I was a little girl, my parents told me I could be anything I wanted to be. The world was my oyster. You can do anything you set your mind to, Jody. I was given all of the right messaging and words of support from someone coming from a family with means and access and education. But there was another story I was privy to. I'll never forget my dad talking about his older brother in a way of longing and envy on some level about the fact that he loved what he did. They grew up in Brooklyn in the 1950s, playing stickball and burying the detention book so they wouldn't get kicked out of school. And my Uncle Murray was kind of an anomaly and that he loved riding horses and playing polo, which was totally outside of the norm of the kids they palled around with back then. But he ultimately grew up to study medicine, become a veterinarian, and raise his family on a farm in Pennsylvania, doing what he loved for the entirety of his career. And my dad used to say this. He'd say, what a gift, Jody. What a gift to know what you love and to do what you love. And so when I started out in my early 20s in my career, I went looking for love in all the wrong places, <laughs> of course, right? First, I chased adventure as a Peace Corps volunteer in Latin America. Then I chased impact. I did policy in government and nonprofit. From there, I got my MBA. And finally, I chased money. I became an investment banker. And after a decade of searching, at 32 years old, I was no closer to finding work that I loved than I had been when I started out. And I was totally crushed. I was devastated. What was wrong with me? <laughs> I didn't love anything. Well, it turns out I was not alone in my misery. I was not an outlier. My Uncle Murray was. <laughs> Only 32% of employees in the United States are engaged at work. Only 32%. Gallup, which is the world's leading organization that looks at workforce trends, studies employee engagement. And they define engagement as this. Engaged employees are those who are involved in, enthusiastic about, and committed to their work and their workplace, which is a noble cause for sure, but says nothing about purpose or meaning, dare I say, love. Which leads us to where we are today. As a society, we are collectively barking up the wrong tree. Instead of spending our lives looking for work we love, which is so <laughs> elusive, depressing, and unattainable for so many of us, we need to make a shift in our mindset. The real goal, the real focus should be this. Make people love you. In a totally professional, platonic, work appropriate, no one is getting sued kind of way for real, right? <laughs> totally, right? But if you make people love you, you will be successful, you will be challenged, you will engage, you will be, have impact and influence. If I love you, I will pay you well, I will promote you, I will mentor you, I will sponsor you. Purpose, meaning, opportunity, advancement, they will find you. As the CEO of a leadership development firm, I spend my life shelling out career advice. And my job today is to build the bench of next generation talent in this country. And instead of telling young people, go find work you love, we teach them how to be loved. And this is what we know to be true. What we see across industries, across sectors, across roles, from the highest level CEO to the newest hire, whether you are working the checkout line at Target or you are doing data analysis for Deloitte, 
The way you make me love you is by embodying four key themes. Generosity, initiative, forward momentum, and transparency. They are a gift. Not the gift of knowing what you love and doing what you love, but the gift of making people love you. Generosity. It's not about being philanthropic or charitable. Generosity is walking in every day and sharing your time, your energy, your talent, your network, make introductions among people. It's about sharing credit, giving props to your team. Generosity at its core is walking in every day and asking yourself this one question. How can I make my team's life better or easier? How can I make my boss's life better or easier? Think of someone right now at work who makes your life better or easier. What would you do for that person? Anything and everything. Initiative. Let me tell you the story of an intern named Josh who showed up for an interview on Wall Street in sweatpants. <laughs> Poor guy, for real. Airline lost his luggage, right? And he got the job. You have to have some mad skills to get hired in sweatpants in Wall Street. <laughs> So Josh goes through his summer, and he does a great job, and he's a really good guy, and everyone likes him, and he's a good cultural fit. And at the end of the summer, as the team is going around figuring out who's getting offers, the first VP speaks up and says, Josh is a really good guy. I like him. I think he worked hard. But you know what? I didn't have anything challenging for him. I don't know if he can cut it. Next VP speaks up. Like Josh, good guy, it was all client service. It wasn't anything technical. It wasn't financial. I don't know if he can do the job. And one by one by one, everyone went around the room with the same analysis. Josh didn't get the job. He didn't know he was supposed to raise his hand, take initiative, and ask for the work he wanted and needed, not just take the work that was given to him. Forward momentum. It's all about moving the ball forward, always. When's the last time you walked into the office, you finished some big initiative or project, you had worked really hard, and you gave it to your boss, and your boss said, thank you so much. Why don't you take the rest of the day off? <laughs> right? Never. Never. That has never happened. Your boss said, thank you so much. What's next? That's why she's the boss, because she's always thinking two steps ahead, which is where you need to be always. And finally, transparency. As Murphy said, if anything can go wrong, it will. You will drop the ball, you will screw up, you will miss a deadline. What matters is that you own up to it, you learn from that mistake. You are transparent when you see a problem coming down the pipeline. Sarah Blakely, founder and CEO of, of Spanx, youngest self-made billionaire in this country, female. She talks about the early lessons from her father, about the fact that he called the learnings in her mistakes and her failures hidden gifts. And she cultivates a culture of transparency at Spanx today by encouraging her team to bring their failures to the forefront. They call them the oops moments of Spanx. Generosity, initiative, forward momentum, transparency. That is how you make people love you at work. And the best news is it's 100% in your control to do that. I'll leave you with this one last final thought. I always get a little bit uncomfortable when I hear grown-ups ask little children what they want to be when they grow up and you hear astronaut or ballerina or Supreme Court justice. And I don't know about you, but I do not know any astronauts or ballerinas <laughs> or Supreme Court justices. And by the same token, I have never met a six-year-old who says, I want to be a recruiting manager when I grow up. <laughs> So what if we change the conversation? What if instead of telling our children to go find work they love, we taught them how to make people love them?
Thank you.